tell you about an experience I had that really kind of changed, I feel like, the direction of my life. In second grade, I just didn't understand much of what was being taught, and my teacher was not affirming, she was not helpful. There were days where I came home in tears. Yeah, I said, um, you know, Mrs. So-and-so, um, can you please help me with some multiplication problem? And she went, oh, okay. I, I've had it, and, and I just was, you know, like frozen, I, I didn't know what to do, and I, I guess I must have told that story to my parents, because the following morning, I'm going to school, and my dad's taking me. Just, my dad had talked at the office, too, and she just walked out on him, and so my dad said, come on, Rebecca, you grabbed my hand, and I never went back to that school. I was thinking, sweet, no school, I have lucked out. Before then, I'd been at kindergarten level in second grade. And that after that, my parents just really felt like it would be it would be a good time to homeschool all four of us children. I fought it very, very much. You know, I struggled with my identity, so I hated reading. I didn't want to read. And my mom, at, I guess I was around 10, 11, she had bought me some books, two books particularly, which sat on my shelf for a long time. And one was called See Yourself as God Sees You and a Young Woman After God's Own Heart. And riding in the van one day, I was really admiring my mom for some reason. And I thought, oh, I love my mom. I kind of, I just kind of want to be like her. And so I picked up a book, because my mom loves reading. And so I picked up a book and I started reading. And it was one of those moments, I like practically jumped out of my bed because I read this sentence in, in this book and I heard it many times in my life, but it just made sense. I had value. And I was like, I was made with a purpose. And I was so excited because that meant everyone must be the same way. And I went and I told family, I was like, did you know that you have your own purpose? And you have that purpose too? And it just, it, it hit me so hard that I would never be another girl's beauty or personality, which I tried so hard to be. And I, I just felt released from that, and that I was created with my own personality or looks in such a way. And so I, it really affected me in a way that I wanted to share it with people. And so with like a 12-year-old mindset, I don't know what I said, but I told a lot of people that. You know, you're, you're so neat, and you're going to do great things. and. Um, so then, with, just with that knowledge, so then um, testing came around the corner, I ended up skipping sixth grade, and after, after a while, we moved to Florida, um, we got into public school again, and I, I was so afraid, and I got in there, and I was way ahead, and I was very surprised, and so when I first saw Montessori <coughs> school, I got so excited, because a lot of the materials that I got to use looked very similar, so I know. side note. I had one of these moments again in 11th grade, and I was wanting to know what to do with my life. I had a passion for children, and it really hit me with that sudden burst of joy and excitement again in class. And I, I had this idea that I would have a camp someday for children. And this, the back thought of it was that hopefully I'd be able to speak to ch the children where they are at developmentally so that I could speak life and encourage them and their passions or their desires. And I threw around the idea of being a teacher, just different things. I didn't know how I'd accomplish this or what steps to take to get to that point. And um, I did not expect to be a missionary for three years. A year ago, I really felt like that was coming to an end. And I was, I was just like, Lord, where do you want me to be? What do you want me to do? And in my heart, I just could not get out of my mind elementary education, elementary education, elementary education. And so for a year I was like, okay Lord, if this is really you, I would love confirmations. I couldn't start college when they were starting that, but I thought, well, what is this with elementary education, Lord? Finally I made a game plan. I said, okay Lord, here's my game plan. The following day, I got an email from Parkway Montessori, and I read how they were looking for an elementary teacher. I was thinking, I made these for I am in school, I don't know, it's too good to be true. And I was hired and I would committed to this. And I'm in training for school. And as, just in the last few months, my excitement and passion continues to grow. I'm like, I had no idea this could grow anymore. And 
there was a, a moment, particularly this one moment in class, and the teacher, he stopped what he was doing, and he looked around at me, and he said something I've almost said for the, like the last years, and he just said, the prank is here, is that you're going to be able to speak to kids at their developmental stage. And he just looked so sternly at me at one moment, and I was like, whoa. And, and it was like the precise wording that I had used. I remember writing it down in my notes. And so I guess that's my heart. I saved a lot of stories and I still went long. <laughs> but I'm just really glad to be here. And one of my, like I guess my conclusion is that I hope, I hope to provide this environment where, where it's joyful learning, reading. It's, there's joy in learning math and language and history and I hope to inspire the kids to go to go out like Angie was talking about to find information and things that they're passionate about